Good evening, everyone. How are you tonight? This is Bonnie Hunter. I am quilting in my basement uh, in my Quiltville studio. I've been working on um, two baby quilts that are for my nephews um, to be. One is the son of my sister and my brother-in-law. They're having their fourth child. And my brother and my sister-in-law are having their second. Both boys are running neck and neck to see who will be born first. And uh, we're, we're just anxious for them to get here. And the birth date should be late June, early July. So Aunt Bonnie needs to get busy on the, on the, the quilts. I've got both quilts here today. This is how far I got. It was such a lovely day that I pulled one of my treadle machines outside onto the back deck and um, worked on them out there. They're assembled. I added an extra row because I did not like long and skinny. And I've added an inner border. This inner border was to round out the measurement of the center. The blocks finish at 11 inches and so it ended at a really, really kind of odd size um, at 44 inches. And I was working with two inch strips that finish at an inch and a half so I needed to do something to add to the center not only to build this up to what I wanted to do for the border, but to give a place for your eyes to rest. So this is a one inch strip. It's going to give me just a half an inch of framing around the quilt to uh, break it up before I put the border on so that the border doesn't just blend right into the quilt center. Um, it's looking a little bit like our audio is lagging slightly from um, what I'm saying. So hopefully it won't be too jumpy for you. You know, the internet is one of those things that we just don't have control over. We do the best we can. I am broadcasting from my basement and I live in the middle of nowhere. <laughs> so if that's any explanation on why things are the way they are, that's the way they are. So the way that my border is going to work, um, I sewed strip sets of three. So I had strip sets that were three strips high and I subcut those at five inches. And now I'm joining the threes to each other. So now I've got bricks of six. And six bricks sewn, or five bricks sewn together will give me the size of border that I need. So I am right now just sewing these to each other and I need to leave one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. I need to leave some of these as singles because I can sew, um, these together four times, but then I need some singles to be the fifth one. So this is how I work. I just set stuff off to the top. If this is your first time joining in at Quilt Cam, um, this is not a time where I show any particular project. It's not a class. Um, this is just me with my camera on, on my own studio time, working on what I want to work on. There is no pattern available at this time. There may be after the quilt is finished, but I never write the pattern before the quilt is finished. I don't know anybody who does. And I'm making choices and changing things up as I go. So um, there may be a pattern available in the future, but it's going to require some finished quilts um, first. So that's what I'm, I'm working on right now. I'm just kind of randomly putting things together in a pleasing manner here. If you want to leave a comment or ask me a question, you can go to my blog at quiltville.blogspot.com and leave me a comment on the bottom of this post where the video feed is. Or you can drop me an email at quiltville at gmail.com. There's also a blue guest book button on the right, uh, left hand side of the, of the blog in the sidebar there. It's blue, it's round, it says email me. So, 
or leave a comment. You can use either of those buttons, but if you leave a comment in the guest book, sign my guest book, it also shows up in my email and I can answer your question. As always, well, at least since we started working with um, Google Hangouts, this feed will be archived on YouTube and you can watch it later. So if you have to go somewhere, it's dinner time where you are, don't worry about it. You can always come back and it will be there um, for you on YouTube. I really love to treadle. I may need the electricity for a good light overhead, but I don't need electricity to sew. I like this. We're going to check the inbox in a minute and see who's tuning in with us tonight. I will probably be a few strip sets short. I went as far as I could go until it got a little bit chilly and windy outside on the deck where I was sewing and brought everything in and this is as far as I've got. But I've got my box of two inch strips over here. I can piece some more strip sets if I need to. Also over here, if you looked on um, the blog page where this, this video is embedded, you will see how I cut my strip sets. I cut them three strips high at five inches, and when I got down to the end of the strip set, if there was any leftovers, I cut these at two inches. Because I can sew these side by side into more nine patches. So really, every bit of fabric goes to good use here. By the time I throw something away, there's hardly anything usable there at all. Let's check um, to see who's tuning in with us tonight. Somebody will say, oh, it's blurry. And somebody will say, oh, it's not working. <laughs> and somebody will say, hello. Here's Kim McKee who says, do you see this cool Lemoyne star I'm working on? What you may not see is how the sashing star strips are about a quarter inch too long at each intersection. Whoops. Making them a total of one and a half inches too long all over. So I am taking apart and remaking each one while watching you tonight. So nice to have a buddy to resell with. P.S. My leaders and enders are scrap nine patches for a block exchange. Great. Um, she says she's getting a bunch of those babies done. I think they call it making lemonade. Happy quilting from all over the mountain in Knoxville from Kim. Oh, this is gorgeous. And you cannot have too much yellow. So that's the Lemoyne stars that Kim's working at. Unstitching a little bit, fixing a little bit. Sometimes we just have to do that. I have here a nifty, nifty seam ripper that my friend Sherry, who is coming to Ireland with me next month, in just a couple of weeks, sent me. A guy in California makes them. And... Uh, I mean, they, they might confiscate this by TSA. I won't take this on the plane, but isn't that cool? So a good seam ripper can be your best friend. Okay, let's see who else is tuning in. All kinds of stuff here. Donna says, thanks for quilt cam tonight. Hi, Donna. How are you doing? Uh, she says, I am trying to finish some square and a square and a square blocks, which I hate. You know what? I, a square and a square is a pain in the butt because something happens when you take a perfectly good square and you put it on point, which makes it a stupid measurement, and then you try to frame it with triangles that have to be rounded up to the next usable size on the ruler because we, we figure the math for things to the nearest eighth. And sometimes that nearest eighth can be too big. So square and a square about the only way I really like to do that is paper piecing if I can get away with it she says um, they finish at four inches you are making them easier to get done oh I hope so here's from Tartan how are you Tartan she says man Bonnie your pictures of sewing on the deck almost make me want to drag my treadle out to the back porch nope too heavy but an electric machine on a card table might be in my future you know it wasn't that heavy because I didn't have to lift it up, it's got wheels. Treadle machines were always on wheels because the ladies would move them wherever they needed to go. And so I wheeled that puppy out of the dining room, across the kitchen floor, down the hall, and out the back door. It only had to go down one step, and so I went to the front of the machine and pulled it out halfway, 
rested those two bottom wheels on the step um, or on on the on the deck, tilted the back side up a little bit and wheeled it on down, it was not a problem. So getting it back in, I what all I did because I want to go out there and sew some more tomorrow was put it inside that back door just far enough inside that the door could open and shut and Sadie can get to her dog door. I loved it. I just loved it. Here's one from uh, sunny Salem, Oregon. This is Sarah Stockton and she says, sewing like mad. Esmeralda goes in for a checkup and a good cleaning tomorrow. Finishing up free motion quilting on a flannel baby blanket. Oh yeah, that flannel really can make a mess in your bobbin area too. So here is Allison who says, Hi Bonnie, like your progress on the boys' baby quilts. Nice inner border to set them off. Loved your post on treadling outside today. So glad you finally did it. Thanks for quilt cam. And that's from my dear friend Allison in Plano. Rebecca says, can't seem to access the link. Is anyone else having problems? If you're having problems, chances are you might be on a mobile device that does not have the wrong, the right um, program downloaded. So please try it on a real computer. If it's not working for you, try a different browser. I recommend Google Chrome. All right, I'm going to sew just a little bit here. All I'm doing is trying to scramble these up so I don't have the same thing next to the same thing next to the same thing. And the, what's the first thing she does? She snaps her thread. I treadled backwards. Lesson number 101 with a treadle machine. Do not treadle backwards. Other than that, they're not hard machines to run. So when somebody says, oh, that machine just scares me, you know, the ones that scare me, all the ones with the bells and whistles, the ones that scare me, the ones where the presser foot goes up and down by itself, those freak me out. All right, but I do require a needle threader because putting my head upside down on the tabletop to see the hole just does not help my old eyes. So just these, those, you know, remember, remember these, these old wire ones, these, these, love them. Okay, now let's treadle forward. Nope, somebody's got my number. <laughs> That's my friend Karen, who says, the next sew day will be in the driveway. Karen, you know, I've got two back-to-back -back treadle machines sitting right here. You could come treadle with me. I'll get you going. I'll get you going. In fact, Karen wanted me to remind everybody, Karen is our one half of Sew Sisters for our Sew Sisters Summit here in Winston-Salem in... August and registrations are coming in hot and heavy. Early registration earns ends June 1st. So if you've been putting it off and thinking about it, email Karen or email me and I'll put you in touch with Karen. And let's answer your questions and so you can get that registration in. You're going to want to come. We're going to have an absolute ball with that. We've got people coming from as far away as Canada and Florida, and outside of Chicago, and uh, um, up by Lake Erie, and over by Williamsburg, and everywhere coming. So it's going to be fun. And don't worry about not knowing anybody, because we can help match you up with somebody if you need somebody to share a room with. And uh, you know how quilters are. We're only strangers once. Some are stranger than others. But we're quilters. We all get along. We're really going to have a good time. Okay. No duplicates here. So the neat thing about doing this quilt for me has been not only working with all the fabrics, but putting my, my grandpa's shirts in here. He wore these shirts till he passed away when he was, was he 93 or 94? I don't remember. So there were quite recent shirts because he's only been gone a couple of years. But um, putting putting those in here for his great grandsons is just really really special. As long as you remember to sew forwards. So 
So we sat out on the deck for hours today. I did have to come in to iron. I, that's the one thing I did not want to do was drag an extension cord out there to, to iron outside as well. I need something with a little more color. That'll work. And I'd come in and iron and check email and go right back out. It was nice. The back of my house faces east. So once it's hit noon, hits noon and the sun goes towards the front of the house, the shade grows over the back of the deck. So in the early morning it's way too sunny out there. But later in the day, it's super. It all the more makes me want to have a screen porch because uh, there were some buggy things out there, but I was determined. And I've got these little sections here to be leaders and enders. These were the short, and I may have to press seams the other direction, but we'll see. Some of them won't oppose. We will fix that. All right, let's see who's with us tonight. Tell me what you're working on. Kim says, great to see you sewing so contentedly. I know you'll make this new life transition smoothly. Oh, yeah, new life transition. <laughs> you'll understand completely, Kim, because I know you're going through the same thing. And it's not that it's a bad thing. It's just a different dance to have um, my hubby working from home more and gone Less. I mean, it used to be that he was at the plant from 7.30 in the morning until 7 o'clock at night, five days a week, and then he'd go play tennis. Well, now he's doing quite a bit of his work um, here from home because he's working over many plants instead of just one, and I don't know what to do with myself. It's just a, a little bit, little bit crazy. I feel almost guilty if I just continue sewing and sewing and sewing, and maybe if he's working, I should be book writing or maybe if he's whatever I should be should I clean the house do I need to make lunch it's just been a whole different thing um, she says I think a positive attitude and a bit of humor will get us both through having our husbands working in the house a good sewing space <laughs> is a must uh, will go a long way for us to have a peaceful retreat spot and that's Kim from the shores of eastern North Carolina Bunny says, how is the treadle on your knees and hips? I have ankle and knee weakness that can't be strengthened. I get tired very quickly. How does it work for you? It works okay. The one thing that I, I have to do with this is wear good shoes. You cannot, you know, I know we have a lot of barefoot sewers, but there's that waffly metal grid thing that's, that's the, the foot pedal. And so I have to have really good shoes with arch supports when I, when I treadle. And I also sit forward in my seat so that I'm not slumping and um, I'm, I'm right actually on the edge of my seat. I could move quite a ways back to be at the back of the seat, but that doesn't free my legs. So I'm just sitting right on the edge of the seat and I take my feet off of the treadle and put them flat on the floor in between sewing things just to keep my posture good. So um, you'd have to give it a try because I think it's going to be different for everybody. But it's definitely worth it. So let's give it a try. I'm just going to snip these apart here. I had hoped that I had done enough piano key border for both quilts, but I think I've got maybe one and three quarters. It's amazing how much a piano key border can take up. Okay. Kathleen, oh my goodness, she sent a picture of what she's working on. It's a wordless post, but looks like a heck of a whole lot of row quilting, whether they're paper pieced or not. There's apples and coffee cups and mittens 
and houses and all kinds of stuff that she's working on. That's awesome. Is this a group project, Kathleen? It's wonderful. I love those coffee cups. Angela says, this is my first time to watch you live. I'm finishing my borders on Easy Street and doing Pineapple Blossom as my next project. Really enjoy watching you on YouTube. We'll, well, back to playing. Thanks for all the things you're teaching me. I am a self-taught quilter of three to five years. Love ya. You know, I wish I were a self-taught quilter in this day and age because there is so much available. When I was learning, it was buy a magazine at the grocery store. And then it would tell you to cut out templates, trace this shape, and add seam allowance. Like, okay, that was a major suck. But, uh, you know, we got through it. So those who are new don't ever be, you know, embarrassed or feel a little self-conscious about being new. You are going to breeze right through this because of all the stuff that is here for you. Okay, so one, two, three, four see if I do this just right. I can just have all four of these borders ready to go on. Because this will sew two, to, two units together and then added this extra one on the bottom. Okay, that should be one border. And I'm just trying to be random. I'm really not looking. There may end up with too much red on one side. I don't care. as long as there's not too many duplicates. There should be 30 strips in each border. And then I'm going to use uh, extra nine patches as my cornerstone. So I think that'll tie it in together. I think that'll be cute. So I had one issue with the other treble machine this afternoon. Let's see. Uh, I need a better collar. That'll work. I used up a bunch of old bobbins just because I wanted, I, I thought it would be a, a way, to, it's, it's those spindle bobbins, a way to clean those out and get all that weird colored thread off of there was to just sew it while piecing piano keys. And then I wound the bobbins with Aurifil. While the old bobbins ran fine in the machine, the bobbins wound with Aurifil. Did not. It would sew about an inch, and then the, the bobbin thread would snap. And then I'd readjust it, make sure it was threaded right, whatever, and put it back in there, and it would sew about an inch, and the thread would snap. And I tried to adjust it. I thought, well, okay, this is a finer thread. Maybe I need to either loosen up on the tension or tighten up on the tension. There really wasn't that much play in the, the screw on, on the, the bullet shuttle. So I put a different bobbin that had other thread on it, back in that machine and it worked fine. I think that the that older machine with the um, vibrating shuttle, that's the one that swings back and forth like this, just does not like Aurifil. It, maybe it's just too dainty of a thread. I don't know. If anybody's had any um, experience with that, Allison, are you still out there? Email me back because uh, I'm, I'm not sure what to do. Not sure what to do with that. And now, of course, I've got these bobbins wound with Aurifil, four of them. And also, they, well, they started to wind just fine, but by the time I was winding the last one, the belt kept slipping on the winder, and this is a newer belt um, on that machine. I put that belt on when I got that machine last fall. So I think... That that uh, belt is going to need a tighten up job. Other than that, they're really simple machines to use, and it's nothing computerized or digital, so it should be really an easy fix. It, it can't be that much of anything wrong. And I'm really thirsty tonight because I took a 
antihistamine for all of the allergy stuff because I was outside in it. <coughs> this is from Loris who says, you might be reading comments off your Facebook page. Nope, I'm reading comments that come into my email. So if you leave a comment on the blog post where this is running live or in my guest book, the, on the blog, the guest book button is the blue one on the left-hand side, or send directly to me an email just like you did. That's exactly what I'm reading. She says, I'm enjoying quilt cam with you while sewing some additional X blocks for a charity quilt. Sadie looks quite happy there in the sun on your deck. Great idea to make you both happy, and that's love from Cambria, California, Loris. So glad you could join us tonight, Loris. Paul says, hi, Bonnie. Did your treadle wheels make a horrible noise like ours do? And that's Paul in Melbourne. Um, yeah, they squeak. They squeak really bad. In fact, I was wanting to run for some WD-40 or some machine oil or something. Because as I was running that across the um, kitchen floor, it was, you know, it was, it was pretty, pretty bad. Pretty bad, but they still turn. Uh, Erica says, picture for tonight, I actually ran out of bed when my mom called to say you were online. I wanted to show you a picture of what will one day be a king size quilt. Let me start that picture downloading because she'll want us to see it. It is three inch blocks. You were my inspiration and I used your neutral tips for picking fabrics. Oh, gorgeous. Speaking of square and a square, my goodness, this is lovely. Looks like she's got all kinds of scrappy. So one block is dark with light corners. The other one is light with dark corners. And when you put them together, you kind of see floating Ohio stars in there. At least I do. That's beautiful. What a great way to use up the scraps. Love it. Amelia says, love the log cabin block hanging in the background. By the way, thanks for quilt cam. That's AJ. Thank you. And this is a comment posted directly onto, do we even, oh, nope. Sorry. Sometimes when the comments come directly to YouTube, they're just not our kind of people. Uh, here's Lorraine who says, picnic table stitching. Your quilting on the deck reminds me of all the times my hand crank went to camp with us and I stitched on a picnic table while watching the four kids play. Fond memories. One of these days, I may be out on my porch stitching, busy working on my scrappy trips, 32 blocks made, and four more to go. Thanks for the quilt cam time, and that's hugs from Lorraine. And I'm dropping things on the floor. Let's get some more of this together, shall we? Yeah. Just trying to spread colors around here. Like that. So I was on the on the email with my editor today, and she said, "Oh, by the way, oh, I am having an out of bobbin experience from like how far back? Oh, not that far. You know what they say: life is one out of bobbin experience after another." I did wind more for this machine too. But I did not wind these with Aurifil. I wonder, that's kind of bugging me. That any other thread worked fine on those bobbins, but Aurifil would snap. Okay. So I'm kind of feeling a little jealous because several of my friends are going to be at Quilt Market this week. They're leaving today or leaving tomorrow or going for the weekend or I don't have a trash can. Oh, yes, I do. And I'm not. And I'll be okay come Thursday because I'll be heading off to Chicago and be busy with a couple of groups there. But I'm, I'm missing Quilt Market this spring. Uh-oh, and this says, plug in or find another server. So why is, I must be unplugged. Oh, I see. Yeah. This will usually do it. There we go. 
Now we have power. That should do it. Sorry, guys, this is so professional. There we go. Lights on. We're good to go. Okay. I had to move things around to get um, this set up because the laptop was on top of the shelf over the other sewing machine. And so now it's like propped up on a couple of boxes to get it the right height, right height at the right angle. 